Hi, you guys. Welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know, I'd like to first get into my introduction and disclaimer before getting started with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey, y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner, and I am the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review courses, review videos, review books, QBanks, one-on-one sessions, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on their boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success. Now, my disclaimer and reminder is that we know there's no absolutes in medicine. We treat on a patient-by-patient basis, and any of the questions that we see here I have designed and created based on the current guidelines that are being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. Now, any of my videos where I'm teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. So with that being said, let's get into question number one for today. Question number one states, a patient presents to the office with complaints of cough, night sweats, and weight loss 48 hours ago. Let me reread this. I'm sorry. That just came out so crazy. A patient presents to the office with complaints of a cough, night sweats, and weight loss 48 hours ago. PPD was placed to the left forearm and the patient returns for assessment of the PPD insertion site. A 15 millimeter in duration is noted on examination. What is the best treatment option at this time? Is it A, rifampin, INH, and pyrazidamide? Is it B, rifampin, INH, pyrazidamide, and ethambutol? Is it C, ciprofloxacin, or D, rifampin, INH, pyrazidamide, and erythromycin? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, so y'all know I always recommend reading the stem of the question first as it'll allow you to slow down to ensure you're answering what is being asked. So here the question states, what is the best treatment option at this time? And you know, I always tell y'all, if they're asking you for a treatment, run it back and see if they provided you with a diagnosis. If they have not provided you with a diagnosis, you need to take it back a step further and look at the assessment findings so that you're able to determine what the diagnosis is that you need to um, look. So in this scenario, there's not a diagnosis provided. So we want to look at those assessment findings, right? So that we can determine the diagnosis. So this patient came 48 hours ago with a cough, night sweats, weight loss. Um, PPD was placed at that visit 48 hours ago and they're back today to have that insertion site reviewed and assessed. There's a 15 millimeter in duration noted so we're looking to see what this could potentially be. So cough, night sweats, weight loss, classic presentation of TB, tuberculosis, right? We don't have any details on the patient's history um, or anything of that nature, but their uh, PPD insertion site shows a 15 millimeter in duration. That is confirming our TB. Now, of course, you would want to proceed and do your um, diagnostics, gold standard, either sputum, I should say, and or sputum culture and chest x-ray. But with this, you are looking to treat this as it is tuberculosis, right? Active TB. They are symptomatic with a 15 millimeter, 15 millimeter in duration. So your best answer choice is B. You know, we treat with rifampin, INH, pyrazidamide, and ethambutol. Okay. Question number two. A nurse presents to the office for PPD placement for an upcoming nursing travel assignment. She states that she completes hospital contracts. PPD results show a 10 millimeter in duration. Upon examination, the patient denies any symptoms and her sputum culture and chest x-ray are negative. How should the nurse practitioner proceed? Is it A, with augmentin plus doxycycline, B, Bactrim plus rifampin, C, rifampin, or D, amoxicillin plus azithromycin? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, so stem of the question here states, how should the nurse practitioner proceed, right? So, okay, let's determine what we're proceeding on because this can be a number of things. We could be proceeding um, with educational tips, proceeding with treatment, proceeding with diagnostic exams, et cetera, right? So when you have stem of the questions like this, you really got to go through and um, walk yourself through the entire scenario that they have provided you. So a nurse presents to the office for PPD placement for an upcoming nursing travel assignment. All right. So she states that she completes hospital contracts. PPD results show a 10 millimeter in duration. Upon examination, the patient denies any symptoms 
and her sputum culture and chest x-ray are negative. All right, so when you think about this, this is a classic presentation, but I need you to be able to walk through the steps. So 10 millimeter induration is the first thing that is should give you an alert box of what you want to consider. So now you're starting to think about tuberculosis, right? And you're potentially thinking, all right, which induration is a positive, right? Now, 10 millimeter induration is not a positive for everyone, but it is positive for certain categories, right? And being in either living in, being an employee in large, uh, crowded, congregated areas like prisons, hospitals, schools, daycares, etc., falls into that category of the population that where a 10 millimeter induration is considered positive. Well, this is a nurse who works for a hospital. Um, does multiple contracts going uh, traveling to different hospitals. So she would be considered positive with a 10 millimeter induration. But this person is just coming in for that, that pre-employment um, screening, right? So with that, she didn't have, she's asymptomatic, it says. And then the sputum culture and chest x-ray were negative. This would be classified as latent tuberculosis. It's not active. So how should the nurse practitioner proceed? You want to proceed with, out of these choices, C, rifampin. She can have monotherapy of rifampin so that we can prevent this latent phase um, to progressing towards an active phase. She does not need to quarantine or anything of that nature, but she will have the rifampin for two to three months to um to help to resolve this. Typically, it doesn't roll into an active phase, but some um some scenarios it does, so it's always recommended to give them uh, this coverage. You can do rifampin, you can do the INH for those latent phase um, tuberculosis, and in some events we give both, okay? And again, like I said, I'm doing these questions in this fashion because we have gone through these from a knowledge perspective where I provided you guys with the diagnosis and then you know, what you should treat with. So just giving you that knowledge and testing it so that you can start to get that ingrained and retained. But now, like I told you, now we're going to hit the application process so I can show you in different scenarios where you're having to process through and work your way through and see what it is, then knowing how to treat these with these antibiotics, okay? And lastly, question number three, a patient presents to the office for review of a PPD insertion site. Results show a five millimeter induration. The patient has a past medical history of diabetes, HIV, and COPD. Upon examination, the patient has a positive chest x-ray. How should the nurse practitioner treat? Is it A, amoxicillin, B, rifampin, INH, pyrazidamide, and ethambutol, C, rifampin, or D, no treatment is required as the PPD insertion site shows only a 5 millimeter in duration? Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments, you guys. All right, so here the stem of the question states, how should the nurse practitioner treat? Y'all know what to do. If they're asking you for a treatment, you want to run it back and see if they have provided you with a diagnosis. And if they have not, take it a step further and look at those assessment findings so that you can determine a diagnosis. Here, the diagnosis has not been provided. So let's see what this patient's presentation tells us. So the patient comes in to, re to get their PPD insertion site reviewed and assessed. There's a five millimeter induration. And the patient has a past medical history of diabetes, HIV, and COPD. So just like the last question, all right, we're looking at this induration and we're trying to determine if this patient falls into a category where this type of indu this measured induration would qualify them as a positive. And so, you know, one of the criteria under the five millimeter induration is immunocompromised patients, right? This patient has a history of HIV. They are considered immunocompromised. So a five millimeter in duration is positive and they also have a positive chest X-ray. So this is considered active TB. So here, the best um, treatment option would be B, rifampin, INH, pyrazidamide, and ethambutol. Remember that when it is active, treat, um, active treatment, when it is active TB, we treat with all four. You know, they give you the acronym RIPE, R-I-P-E, for rifampin, INH, pyrazidamide, and ethambutol. If it's active, we're giving you all four, okay? All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But make sure y'all meet me back here. And if you need any other resources that I do offer, 
feel free to reach out to the nursing studio by giving us a call at 803-400-6864. You can also shoot a text message to this number or shoot us an email to the nursing studio, the number one at gmail.com. Now, the things that I do offer are my review book. You can get it in ebook or paperback option. They're both linked in the bio of this channel. If you prefer to study independently, I do offer a self-paced review course that is linked in the bio of this channel as well. It is designed for family and adult GERA for both exams, the AAMP as well as ANCC. Um, if you are looking to practice doing um, questions, need a QBank options, those are also linked in the bio of this channel. And then lastly, if you're looking to book a one-on-one -on -one session, you know I always tell you to either call, text, or email because these are customized. So I like to gauge which one of my one-on-one -on -one options are best for your, your study and learning needs. And then we go from there um, as far as scheduling and booking those, okay? But as always, y'all know what to do. Y'all make sure y'all meet me back here. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.